plus 7 over x to the 4th plus, fourth plus, x, minus plus x minus 1 four. minus 4. Okay, so there's the function. There it is. And uh, you could go to any value of x so long as it it's in, it in the domain, and you can find the slope of the tangent line anywhere you want on that now. You ready to turn the screws? Have y'all heard that term before? Turn the screws. Have y'all heard that? To turn the screws? Yeah, it's, uh, I think the term comes from a torture device that they used to use on people's heads. Yeah, they, you, they would put your head in basically in like a clamp. Talk, man, tell us where the gold is or whatever. You know, and then they would slowly turn the clamp so it would get tighter and, you know, talk, turn the screw a little bit more. Talk. Yeah? So uh, we'll, we'll turn the screws now a little bit. Okay, how about this? Um, <clears throat> that doesn't look too bad. Okay, now it's getting a little more interesting. Does anybody see why this is getting a little more interesting? Because you have two things happening here, right? Do you see that you have a product up top? And do you see that you have a quotient also? So the way we're going to deal with this is we're going to treat this first like a quotient rule, all right? So we have something on top, something on the bottom, right? So the derivative of this should be, let's use the sticks. Ah, I have them right here. I knew they'd come back in. Nas, no. You thought I forgot. You thought I forgot. You hoped. Alberto. Yes, sir. All right, okay. you're up. So just, yeah, you, I'll let you talk. I'm doing it on my... Just kind of tell me what you want me to do. First thing is it's going to be the derivative of the top. Okay, so you want me to write x cubed sine x in parentheses its derivative, okay, times. Okay, how do you want me to write that? Like, is that okay like that? Have to have parentheses, okay? Minus. Minus. Okay, bottom, in parentheses, its derivative times the, times the top, so x cubed sine x, like that, right? All of it over the bottom squared. Okay, do you all see that that's the quotient rule? Yes? I was just wondering why do you treat it as a quotient first and then a product as opposed to a product? Great question. Why do we not do the product first then the quotient? The idea is this. Um, if I were to, how can I explain this? Think about if you plug x in here. I don't know if this is going to be a good explanation or not, but if I ask you to plug x into this, right, you're going to do x into here, right? Figure out what that is. You're going to do x into the whole top. And you're going to do them separately, right? And then put them together at the end, right? So. So if you were to just kind of like close your eyes and look, what you've got is, is something over something. Regardless of what's happening on top and bottom, you've got division is kind of like the overpowering thing. You can't, you can't mix these two up. The last step you do is putting the top and bottom together. So it's more of a division than it is a product. I don't, I, I, it's a, uh, this is a good question. Because the product is in the numerator and the product is not out in front of the fraction? I don't think I have a good answer right now. <laughs> I mean, could we? Would <coughs> the same answer? You can't, no. Wow. Well, okay, you're saying if you take the derivative of the top, right, and then treat that like a quotient rule, it would not work. No. no. I'm saying treat, treat the top as a product. Okay, so how would you start then? Wait, x squared sine x? Or x cubed, sorry. Okay, so, so if you wanted to treat the top like product rule first, how would you start that, though? 
Because a product rule is always something times something, right? You, ha you, don't, you have something else. You don't have that product. You have something times something, but it lives within a quotient. Mm -hmm. Like if this wasn't here, yes, of course, product rule, because you clearly have two things being multiplied, right? But now that multiplication belongs to a bigger expression where division is really in control. You, don't, you can't right now tell me this is something times something. You can't. Only part of it is something times something. Yeah, I don't, let me think more about that. It's, it's a good question. It, yeah, I guess it's just because I can't, I, there's no way I can write this as something times something. Because that's what I'd need to do to start with the product rule. Right? Because you've got to have like the first times the second, or derivative first times second, plus derivative the second times the first. Well, what's the first and what's the second? You can't split that apart to make it look like this. Does that make sense? Sure? Okay. All right. So Alberto's given us this. Oops. Alberto's given us this. Are we all comfortable with that? With, with what Alberto came up with here? Everyone knows where it came from? Okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> lucky, lucky, Rasul. All right. Rasul, we've got to take the derivative of this, right? So uh, what is this, though? I mean, look at it. What is that? You have to take derivative of that now, don't you? Yeah, it's the thing that, like, uh, I'll, like, okay. What do you see right here? X cubed sine x. OK, x cubed what sine x? Uh, no, 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 hold on. x cubed plus sine x? No. x cubed? Time, time. Oh, you're telling me you have a product right here. Uh, Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. You have a product right here, and you're trying to take the derivative? Right? Yeah. That means you have to do the product rule on this when you take its derivative. Do you see that? Yeah. Does everyone see that? This is a problem. We have a, it, the overlying thing is we have quotient rule. But within the quotient rule, one piece of it is a product rule. OK? So now we have to deal with this. So I'm going to come over here on the side, and I'm going to do scratch work. And what I'm going to do is take the derivative of this by itself. Whatever I get here is going to become the top left corner of this expression. Do you see how this is becoming complicated pretty quickly? So why would it be, why would it be simplified to 1x cubed times 1? What do you mean x cubed times 1? Yes. So why would we just do x cubed times 1? Cosine of x isn't 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I see what I was making. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right, so the I variable expression. Why would we simplify the x cubed times cosine? Or would we just end up in the same problem where we still have a product and we have to? There's nothing you can do to this. To take its derivative, there's nothing you can do other than the product rule. That's all you can do. Now, you can take the derivative of this, say, 3x squared times cosine x, and it's wrong. You can do it, though. That's like my dad said. You can do anything you want to do. Doesn't mean you're doing the right thing, OK? So we don't want to make that mistake. We want to see the product, OK? We want to see the product within one piece, and then come over here and crank out the product. All right, so now we have a new problem. You want to keep going, Russell, or no? Maybe. Do you want to do a derivative of this for me? Yeah. Okay, so let's try it. So, uh, like the, yeah, 3x. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way. You want me to do the derivative of the first one, right? Oh, okay. Times like the second one, right? Plus the derivative of the second one times the first one. That's the product rule. Now, you, were already, you had already done that in your head. So you had already taken derivative of this. That's what? 3x squared sine x. And then derivative of sine x 
is cosine x, but then I have an x cubed. So I'm going to put it like this, x cubed cosine x. Just to make it, I was going to do that step anyway. Instead of the x cubed back here, I just move it out front. We all good with that? Everyone understand that this right here is just the top left corner of our answer. Okay. So we keep going. This won't have to be changed, right? Minus, now the derivative of that, and let's see the lucky one here. You are lucky. Aaron? Where's Aaron? Aaron's not lucky. Heidi? Yeah, there you are. I'm saying, I'm saying lucky because I'm, I'm hoping you're okay with the derivative of this. 2x, that's it, right? You have addition, right? thank goodness it's not a product. You have addition here, so you can do them individually. Derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 1 is 0. Everyone good? I don't need scratch work for that. So I'm ready, I think I'm ready for the next line. I think I'm ready to put this all together. My next line should be this derivative, which we got over there, and I still need it in parentheses. And I need it in parentheses because I have more than one term. Okay, so that's our top left. That's this. We still have times x squared plus 1. And then minus, Heidi just said that's 2x. That's 2x. And then we still have here x cubed sine x. And then all of that over x squared plus 1 squared. And this right here is our raw derivative. How could we simplify this? I'm not going to do the simplification step. I'm not doing it, okay? Because it's just going to take us too much time. If I did, though, I would have to multiply this there and then there. And then I'd have to multiply this there and there, right? And then over here, there's no distribution. So all that would happen was you would have minus 2x to the fourth sine x. These two x's would come together and become x to the fourth. And that would be your answer. You try to collect like terms if you had them. I am really mostly concerned on this next test, I am mostly concerned in the raw derivative. I mean, I want to see that that's correct. Because if this is wrong, nothing else matters after that. Right? Questions, comments, concerns, complaints? Would anyone like to make a formal complaint about uh, calculus? Why we couldn't? Okay, so tell me. Okay, so I've never had that question posed. And I've been doing this for a long time. So let's see if we can't resolve it. All right? Why can't we do the product rule first? I need you to tell me how you want me to do that then, because I'm not sure how to even do that. I want to plug that in on top of x. Oh, so you just want to? Okay, so you just want to do. Okay, I'll just put it there and then you, so you want me to do that and then what do you want me to do for the bottom? Okay, and then what? And then do the question, so you're going to wind up taking derivative of the top a second time, aren't you? Like, aren't you? Like you? This expression up here is already the derivative of something. It's a derivative of the top. But now you're saying that you're going to use a quotient rule on this, but that top part is no longer what it was originally. It's now the derivative of something. So when you do quotient rule now, you're going to be taking derivative of that. So you're now actually going to have a second derivative up there. Okay. Does that help at all? Then you could proceed with the product rule of the first part, which is the first derivative. And, but if, 
even if you did all that, you would still end up in a situation where you have a positive sign on top as opposed to a negative sign on quotient. Does that make sense? I'm going to be honest and say no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, because I was trying hard to follow you there. But Maybe I was mumbling too much, but I'll just write No, no. Out. The thing we have to see here is that regardless of what's going up, going on up, up top and regardless of what's going on in the bottom, regardless of those two expressions, this is a quotient rule. Okay, we have a quotient. And so we apply the quotient rule. Now when we get to the part where we take the derivative of the top, if that turns out to be a product rule, then we have to go do the product rule. I understand what you're doing here, but if you're going to take the derivative of the top, why not then just take derivative of the bottom also? Like, I, I don't understand the logic of doing just the derivative of the top because it was a product, but then not touching the bottom because it wasn't. You know, I'm just challenging, like, the logic behind it. Because if I were going to do it that way, this is what I would have done. And this is not correct because this is what we wish it was. We wish this is what it re required. Well, no, what we really wish is that the answer to this was that. That's what we really wish it was. Because that would make calculus a lot easier, wouldn't it? All you're doing is just taking derivative of this, 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 and you're done, right? Like that. But then again, like I said in the beginning, like life would be a lot easier that way. It's, that's not the way it is. So somebody on the test is going to do that. I promise you, somebody in here <laughs> is going to do it. Yeah, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? That's where we're going. Yep. <clears throat> Let's try something a little different. I'm going to use f of theta instead of f of x. So theta is still our variable, all right? Equals theta sine theta over um, theta squared cosine theta plus 1. I'm kind of turning the screws pretty hard here. I don't, I'm not sure about this, but. Can we get points off if we just leave it as x? Like change it all to x? I wouldn't really, I guess it doesn't matter. Edward. Where is he? There you are. All right, so what am I going to, what am I, what do you see here? Yeah, quotient, right? So this is quotient. So let's set it up. We have, Edward, f prime of theta is going to be, it's almost like you can sing it in your sleep now, right? Isn't it? Derivative of the top. top. Okay, so you're going to go theta sine theta. That's, that's, you want me the derivative of that, right? Times what? The whole thing, right? Theta squared cosine theta plus 1, all of that in parentheses, right? And then minus, the derivative, of the, bottom. the derivative of the bottom, which is that whole thing with a little prime mark. Times the theta, sine theta. theta sine theta on the top, like that. I can put parentheses, doesn't matter. Then all of this over the bottom, squared. bottom squared. There you go. All right, that's good. Now, Marissa, you got all that written down, Marissa? Okay. Got it now? Yes. Okay. So, Marissa, 
That first derivative in the top left corner, how are you going to do that? That's a product, right? So you're going to have to do a product rule here. So we're going to have to do some scratch work on the side for that, aren't we? Okay, and then after we do that, we'll continue through here. We don't have to touch that, right? When we get to here, what are we going to have to do? Another product, right? Now we do have addition, don't we? So we'll be able to do the derivative of these separately, but that one is a product. And the derivative of that is going to be zero, but we still will have a product here. So we're actually going to need two pieces of scratch work on the side. All right. Why don't you, why don't you do those You're on your own? You have to do both of these. Take derivative of that, and then the other one you have to do is this one. And let me, uh, let me give you a couple of minutes to see what you get. You good? Uh, yes. You have a question? So when I'm taking the derivative of the second term, the cosine of theta the plus one, the second part, do I need to include the plus ones? Is that a score zero? Yeah, go ahead. Yep, that'll work fine. You can do that. Yeah, on mine though, notice on mine, I did mine a little different. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, you can't do that. Um, notice how I just put theta squared times cosine theta? Because this is not plus one. Theta squared is not being multiplied times both of these. It's only being multiplied times that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take derivative of both of these separately. Derivative, the derivative of this one is zero here, okay? So that one is zero. But this one requires that. Does that make sense? So you want to leave that one off to the side. It's not going to change the answer. Um, actually, it does because this right here, this wouldn't be correct. That wouldn't be correct because then you'd have to distribute through to both and it, it wouldn't work the same way. You see that the product is only between these two. Okay, so that means in your product rule you only work with those two, not with the plus one. Let's go another minute and we'll just see where everyone is. Are you asking, is this right? So 2 theta cosine theta minus sine theta times, um, where did the 1 come from? Well, you're, okay, so you're trying to take, you're trying to take derivative of this one, right? Okay, so it's derivative of this, 2 theta times cosine theta, you have that plus derivative of this, which was negative sine theta, right? That's what you have, negative sine theta, times this. Just that, no derivative. 
The squared? Yeah, so you had it here, but not here. Okay, there you go, yeah. And, but it looks like you took the derivative of it, though, right? Because you put a one there? Yeah. Yeah, that, meant, that would have meant you took derivative of both. Okay, so just be careful with that. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's sufficient time for us to talk about this. Who wants to volunteer to tell me what the derivative of this top left corner is? Go ahead, what do you got? Do you all agree? Sine theta plus theta cosine theta. That is correct. Good. Yes? No, I just got theta. On the back side? Yeah, just move it out in front of the cosine. It's not wrong, okay? It's not wrong, but this is the danger. If someone writes this, they might on the next line write theta squared, like theta times theta, and you can't do that. These thetas can't come together. Okay, anyone have the next parenthesis here, which was the derivative of this one? Go ahead. I have 2 theta cosine theta. 2 theta cosine theta. Plus. Plus. Negative sine theta. Negative sine theta. Times theta squared. Times theta squared. I wasn't sure if I could put that in the front or not. Yes, you, you can move that theta squared to the front and make that plus or minus. Okay, so this is the derivative. This is the derivative of that. Also notice that the one here, the derivative of that was zero, okay? Um, but the product rule on this gives you this. So I would, cha I would change this to be minus theta squared sine theta. That's how I would change that. Questions on that? Yes. Yes, right here. Uh, okay, that's a great question. Do we, is this, the question is, do we do theta squared times cosine theta plus one? Like, should there be a plus one here, I think is your question. Well, my question then back to you would be, is the theta squared actually multiplying the one? It's not, right? So the theta squared and the cosine are the only thing that are involved in a product. So that's what you want over here. You don't want the plus one. Does that make sense? So you can do that, do this product rule over here, plug it in here, and then say plus the derivative of the one, which is the zero. And that means it's gone. So if it doesn't follow the product terms, it's a zero? If it doesn't what? If it's a constant, yeah, as long as it's, like if that would have been, like if I would have put right here like theta, then that would have changed the problem. Yeah, a lot of things would a lot of things would have been different here. Okay, um, let's do one more example before time's up, and I'm going to pass the sign-in sheet around because I keep forgetting to do it. Oh, we're not simplifying that one. What is today? The 26th. I haven't taken attendance in a while. All right, here you go. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Okay, take a look at that one. Okay, you see, the, you see the function up here. y equals root x over 1 plus x squared. I would like to know where the tangent line to that is horizontal. Oh, whoa, what happened there? Square root x over 1 plus x squared. There we go. Okay, look, 
you see the graph of this? This is the graph of that function. And I'm trying, I'm asking you, where is the tangent line horizontal? So when we look at this, the tangent line, you know, we're talking about these are the tangent lines, right? To the curve. I want to know when it's right there, horizontal, right? And that means there's some x value somewhere here where we get that, right? I would like to know what it is. So what does that mean? What is really the question for this? I mean, what is it really that you have to answer? When is, yeah, when is the slope zero, right? So when is y prime zero? So we have to take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero, right? Find the derivative of that and set it to zero. So let's start with the derivative. Starting with the derivative, Tatum, you're up. What do you see happening here, Tatum? Are we, are we product rule, quotient rule, quotient rule, right? So that means we're going to do derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Uh, squared, yes, thank you. I was just admiring my sagging, my sagging uh, line there. Okay, good? All right, let's take our derivative. So the derivative, Emmanuel, where's Emmanuel? What's the derivative of root x, Emmanuel? Root x. 1 over 2 root x. So again, let's all get this burned in. Derivative of that is that. Okay, now I don't do anything with this, right? Just leave it. And then minus. Zero plus yeah. Two so 0 plus 2x. Two two so just 2x, like that. And then times root x. And then all of this over. 1 plus x squared squared. Pardon? No, Okay. All right. So that's the raw derivative, isn't it? In its raw form, there it is. And we would like to know when that is 0. So I have to set that equal to 0 and solve for x. And that should be a little bit scary to look at, shouldn't it? Doesn't it? Isn't that? You don't want to set that to zero, do you? Well, too bad. <laughs> That's what you have to do. Okay, so let's establish something. I have seven minutes. This is a very important point, all right? So this is a side note, but please take this with you the rest of your mathematical life. If you ever have a fraction that is equal to zero, ever, Okay, if you're ever looking at a fraction, something over something equal to zero, all you have to do is, is look at when the top is zero. Why? Why do you not care about the bottom anymore? Because if you multiply the bottom, it to the other side, it should be multiplied by zero. If I take b and multiply it right here on both sides, these b's will cancel, and that's still zero, so you just wind up with a equals zero anyway. Now that is a huge factor here, because I want to know when this is zero, don't I? But it's a fraction. So all I have to do now, I need to state this, I want to know when y prime is zero, right? That's the question. But that means for me here that all I really need to look at is when this numerator is zero. Do you all see what I've done? I've thrown out the denominator completely. Just set the numerator equal to zero. And now I have to go solve this equation. So how am I going to solve that? Let's see here. Well, let me rewrite it a little bit first, OK? Can I rewrite this? Do you all agree that that's, uh, 
1 plus x squared over 2 root x. So that's me just taking this right here and sliding it underneath this, right? And then I'm just going to rewrite that. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put both of these together like this, but that means I need a common denominator. And the common denominator would be 2 root x. So that means I have to look at this fraction as being this over 1. I need to introduce a 2 root x here and a 2 root x on the top. Understand? Okay, what happens then? I'm going to have this over 2 root x. Minus, now what do I get on top now when I do this? You get 4, right? 2 times 2 is 4, so you get 4. And then what does this root x and root x multiply to be? Just x, but I already had an x there. So x squared over the common denominator equals 0, right? Now I can put those together, can't I? Put those together now. 1 plus x squared minus 4x squared, right, like that, over 2 root x equals 0. So I push them together. And now, don't we have the same thing again, like a fraction equals 0? So if, if a fraction equals 0, you only have to look at what? The top. So this becomes, what is the top? 1 minus 3x squared equals 0. And we finally have it to something that looks doable. Do you all see all that? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to solve this. I'm just going to move the 3x squared to the other side. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And then I'm going to take the square root. And when I do the square root, I should get plus or minus. And we have two potential solutions for x. Okay, so this was in the work. Yeah. Do you all follow all that logic through there? Now, one of these answers we can throw out. And that is the negative one. And the reason we can throw the negative one out is because if we look back at our original curve, Square root of x, you can't have a negative in here, can you? Right? So we can chunk the negative one. So it looks like our only answer is x equals square root of one third. That's where we should have a horizontal tangent. And so what I'm going to do is go back to the graph. And I told you this program's pretty smart. Yeah, if I click on it, check it out, it actually shows me a point right there. You'll see that point? And if I hover over it, it is 0.5774. So somebody on their calculator do take one third and then take its square root. And if we did it right, it should be 0.577 something. Yes? All right. This is where we're headed. We want to be able to look at a function, take its derivative, set it equal to zero, find out those values. We'll have more practice. Right now, you need to focus on your homework. Do all your homework, all right? Just making sure you're comfortable with the product rule and quotient rule. All right? And the problems in the homework are not as hard as some of the ones I put up here. I wish they were harder, because they're, they're not that challenging. Yes? So we're going to go to the lab? Yeah, we have one more section. Next section after this one. Thursday is the last day of material that will be on the test. But Thursday is, Thursday is the hardest rule and the most important rule. It's the chain rule. It's, it's the next. What we haven't done yet, what we haven't looked at is, is, is what if you have something like this? What's the derivative of this? This is not a product. Right? This is not a product. This is composition. This is a function inside of another function. That's very different than two functions multiplied. And so how do we deal with that? That's what next class is about. And once we have that, that's it. That's all the rules for Cal 1. Theoretically, after next class, 
you should be able to differentiate pretty much any function out there. Yeah. Yep, have a great day.